Hello guys, welcome back to Gemini Gamers. This is part number two of my KSP tutorial, where I'm basically teaching you how to play the game and basically be able to actually explore the game and uh, go wherever you could ever want to any of the planets, uh, any basically anything you could ever want. So again, I'm teaching you how to do everything uh, in a very simple way, um, kind of avoid most of the math stuff, basically just to not bore you guys. And uh, you know, anyway, most of you people don't really want to learn the math; they just want to learn how to play the game. But uh, yeah, so in this uh, this part, we're gonna actually teach you how to get into orbit, which is basically one of the most important things of uh, playing the game. If you can't get into orbit, you can't really do anything. Um, yeah, because once you're in orbit, you can actually go anywhere. You can go to the moon. You can go to Minmus. You can go to Duna, which is another planet. You can go anywhere. So. Orbiting a planet, your first orbit is very important, and getting good results when you're going into orbit is very important too, due to fuel consumption and stuff like that. Uh, and practice, again, practice is very important here. Um, no matter how well I can, I do a job here of teaching, you have to practice it, right? You're not going to be good uh, at doing it without actually practicing at all. So uh, with the more practice you get, you'll be able to get into orbit with less fuel, um, you know, not, not because it's going to be more efficient, but because you're going to make less mistakes, causing, causing you to use less fuel when you're actually going up into orbit, right? So that will give you more possibilities with smaller ships. Uh, you can build smaller ships and, um, basically be able to use the fuel more efficiently and actually end up using fuel that would you, you normally would use to get into orbit to actually just fly out into space. And uh, also, the more practice you get, you'll be able to get more larger and bigger payloads into space, allowing you to do more complicated missions. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get into the VAB here and uh, get that first little thing of importance out of the way. And then once we do that, I will go to the launch pad with the rocket that is going to take us into orbit. All right, guys, so here's the first rocket. Uh, you might think, okay, well, it's a long rocket. It looks like it's a very pointy pencil-looking structure, right? And the Delta V is over the required 3,400 meters to get into orbit. And if you don't know how where I got that number from, it's from the Delta V map that I used in the first episode to show you what basically is required from your rocket to go anywhere. And there will be a link... On the description for you to do that uh, make sure you check that out uh, there's also a link for Kerbal Engineer which is this little thing here uh, this little UI thing Kerbal Engineer basically teaches you or tells you the Delta V of your rocket um, so yeah okay so yeah of course a lot of fuel means a lot of Delta V right so why is this not a good idea to do something like this well first things first our thrust to weight ratio is very very bad is 0.88 which means that we won't take off the ground you want this thrust to weight ratio to be over one for you to even be able to get off the ground so right now if we were to launch it this rocket would probably fall over because of its inability to actually take off and you know go up basically it won't be able to go up so you want this thrust to weight ratio to be over one and by removing weight for example right here once we remove that thrust to weight ratio has gone up Okay, so now that that's taken care of, is this a good model to use? No, you don't want to use a single stage um, rocket to go into orbit because it's not very efficient. You can't get much of a payload up there. Um, so yeah, and you don't have any well any way with this model right here. You don't have any way to actually separate the capsule for reentry, which is going to be another issue. Uh, heat heat is a big problem now. Heat wasn't that big of an issue back then back in the days of like 0.23 but now uh the developers have added you know atmosphere heating so uh you know your kerbals do die when they come in too fast so you need to be careful with that and with this giant ship the ship is going to want to you know the rock is going to want to go down the pointy part because the pointy part is more dynamic so which means that your rocket is basically going to come down to the ground like this right like that and that will basically be the end of your Kerbal. So you need to be careful with the way you design your ship. Make sure that your space pod has an ability to easily get into 
the atmosphere without you know overheating or anything like that so yeah that's the only thing i have to say so this rocket not a very good model it does have enough delta v to get into orbit but thrust away ratio is very low more delta v is going to be wasted and uh kerbal engineer has a little feature that when you click on the atmo button it tells you the efficiency you're going to get from the start meaning that from the launch pad we're going to have this our thrust away ratio is not strong enough to get us off the ground anyway in that situation so yeah this rocket is not very good if you build something like this you're not going to make it as if it's your first time you're not going to make it it's possible but trust me you're not going to make it all right so if you're a noob this is not going to work all right so Pro players can do it. I've seen it. I've seen them do it, but this is, you know, just don't do this, all right? So now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the one, to a model that you should build off on and at least observe the way it works, right? So here we go. All right, so here we have another rocket. This rocket, again, has enough delta V, has way over the 3,400 meters mark, which means that this rocket is capable of going into orbit. The thrust away ratio is uh, well above, you know, one. Which means that, you know, very, very high ability for us to actually get off the ground and go up, right? So, again, single core here with two boosters, all right? The boosters are very important, okay? Um, they're basically going to push the whole rocket up, giving us more range, I guess you could say, in that way, uh, and higher speed. And then once that happens, they're going to fall off, you know, like the boosters on the space shuttle, leaving the single core ready to go. I have included fuel lines here to transfer the fuel to the to the to the middle core here. And that will basically mean that the, these will drain. And when these are drained, this one will still be full, allowing me to basically detach and have a single core still full of fuel and uh, basically giving me a little more efficiency that way. Uh, not really, but it'll let me control the way the fuel is burning, giving me a little more, a bit of time to, uh, waste the Delta V in a higher altitude, which means it would give me a tiny bit more efficiency. Remember, the higher you go, when above an atmosphere, the, the as the atmosphere gets thinner, the higher efficiency you'll get from your rockets, all right? So, that's also something to get in mind, right? You don't want the most efficient rockets on the bottom, because they will most likely will not have enough thrust. For example, uh, the Terrier liquid fuel engine is mostly used for a landing rocket. Um, very low thrust, but very high efficiency. But if we were to replace this engine, big engine, with the Terrier, like that, we would not have the thrust away ratio required for us to actually get into orbit. Right? So, gotta think about it that way. And again, there's a nuclear engine, and another common mistake people make is they see, oh, nuclear engine, man, I gotta use that. That's probably gonna blast the rocket like into like another universe or something. No, it's not, right? It has a very low thrust to weight ratio, very, very highly efficient, but it has a low thrust to weight ratio and also it weighs three tons, okay? The Terrier weighs 0.5. The swivel that we're using here weighs 1.5, but has almost three times as much as uh, the thrust, okay? So again, you gotta look at it that way. Thrust is very important. Weight is very important when you're going into space and stuff like that. Okay, so that's for the bottom part of the rocket. The top part of the rocket, we have another stage. So we're using one of these uh, stack decouplers, which are found in the coupling section right here. Basically, what this does is once you get to the stage you want to, you 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 know you're trying to de detach it. It basically allows you to detach pieces off your rocket. All right. So once you run out of fuel in this single core here. Uh, we will de use the stack decoupler to basically go into another stage that will engage in, uh, in the third stage, right? And that when that falls off, it will um, uh, release this other engine up here, allowing us to get more efficiency because this engine no longer has to push this whole core down here, right? It only has to push this tank, this pod, and this parachute and a heat shield, which is also important. I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, so make sure when with your orbital stage like this, it's going to be the orbital stage, okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure I can get into orbit with just this, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this just to make to allow you to see how you should be building your rockets, right? So, yeah. So basically, on the orbital stage, you want solar panels because again, you need power generation in space, so that's also important. Make sure you've got those. Again, uh, these look like this: extend solar panels. There you go, solar panels, little baby solar panels right there. 
retract. You can do that in or in orbit or, or whatever you need to. As long as you're not going in an atmosphere. If you're in an atmosphere, remember these are gonna break off because they are solar panels. Okay, there's physics to it, I guess. And batteries. Batteries are also very important. Um, I'm actually gonna fix something here for symmetry. All right, perfect, perfect. So anyway, batteries allow you to keep uh, electric charge stored. And when you're in the dark side of any planet, you can get uh, use your electric charge that your solar panels were able to store in them. So very cool stuff. And all that adds up to you being able to control your ship. Okay. So command pods have a an ability to have reaction wheels, and basically that's just the way your ship is able to move, turn. You know, it's not able to go push itself. It's not able to push itself, but it's able to basically create a force that it allows it to. Maneuver, I guess, you know, you can spin around, you can basically the way your ship moves, okay? So that's the way it works. And reaction wheels require electricity, okay? That's a that's a big deal. Since uh, most uh, most things require resources, that's the resource it requires. And as long as you have electricity, you'll be able to move around. They're not the strongest. That's why we also included a little these RCS thrusters. Uh, RCS thrusters are more important for you to actually be able to dock uh, maneuvering around is not the best either with them, but you know, because you're wasting fuel and you could just do it with normal reaction wheels. By the way, you can put more reaction wheels if you feel like your rocket isn't doesn't have the enough maneuverability. You can put more reaction wheels, they're found in the command and control tab. So make sure you, you put up some of those if you need if you have a very large ship. Uh, RCS thrusters again, same thing, but they require fuel that you cannot. Um, Called monopropellant, I guess you cannot replace that unless you get a miner up there somehow. And um, once you get up there, uh, these work better in space. Uh, same thing, maneuvering, but very important for docking. Uh, make sure you put it in the center of mass. And there's this button down here that allows you to see the center of mass. So go ahead and pre press it. And as you can see, they're not at the center of mass. So being at the center of mass is very important because if you don't have them aligned uh, you'll end up having in a, the inability of actually like moving your ship around without causing you to start drifting in some direction okay very very complicated stuff again not the simplest stuff uh, I will probably make a whole episode a whole part I guess on um, how you can design a ship for you to be able to dock with okay um, this is just basically me going into orbit Probably the docking sequence is going to be next episode, but again, that's one of the more harder parts and I do not want to do that one right now, so it's going to take a little more time, but I will do it, so again, subscribe and all this stuff so you, you can see that episode. Anyway, moving on to the other thing, uh, once you're done doing whatever you're doing in space, you need to be able to detach this stage because this stage, again, is going to make it very difficult for you to return to the atmosphere, okay? So you get another stack decoupler. Boom, okay? So, done, right? No, you're not. Uh, you have another piece here called heat shield. Uh, very important. Again, you need a heat shield to be able to come in. The pod is able to take a lot of heat by itself, but it's safer for you to just put a heat shield, right? And the parachute, just to be, you know, make sure your Kerbal doesn't get pulverized at the, with the ground and, or the water or whatever. So anyway, that's pretty much it. The heat shield does have its own resources, resource called the blader. You can add and take away as much as you need, but for a normal mission, you don't need that much. So I'm just going to turn it down. Again, you do this by right-clicking the part and then just left-clicking and dragging across how much stuff you want. It works with every resource. Uh, monopropellant, liquid fuel, oxidizer, which is, you know, liquid oxygen, I guess. And uh, you can basically turn all that up and down as much as you want it to. Okay, so anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for the structure of the rocket. And uh, again, also when you when you do it, when you're designing a orbital stage, make sure you have enough fuel to return. Around 500 meters should be enough, probably less, maybe 300 meters, depending on how high you know, the higher you go, your orbit is, the higher it will be for you to actually be able to <clears throat> uh, use the fuel up. You're gonna need more fuel basically to come back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain all that once we get up there. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and go to the launch pad and. Uh, basically go into orbit for the first time for a lot of you and also make sure your staging is deorganized before here you don't want to forget that make sure you, your stages are going to engage when you want them to sometimes the game messes up and puts the parachutes down here 
and you're like, okay, let's go, boom. So your rockets engage and your parachute engages at the same time, and you're basically a whole mess. So make sure you look at that and get that fixed before you go anywhere. Okay, so now we can actually go and launch this baby. All right, we're at the launch pad now. Again, make sure your stages are correct. Um, make sure to use SAS. That you activate that by pressing T. Oops. You activate that by pressing T here. And once you do that, uh, it's basically an autopilot. I explained that last episode. I'm not going to go over again. And RCS by pressing R. And as you can see, when we move around, the RCS thrusters actually release a little bit of gas there. And uh, that basically helps you move around. But make sure you don't, you don't have it engaged all the time because you're going to burn through your fuel and you're going to be in a big mess. So, anyway, make sure you press C for maximum throttle. Again, this is a throttling, basically the power you're releasing through your engines. You want that to be at 100, and you control that with shift to go up and control to go down. And your hotkeys are C for maximum power and X for zero. All right, so very cool stuff. Uh, so make sure again your SAS is engaged. And to start the staging sequence, press space to go into the first stage. So here we go. All right, so. Kerbal Engineer will give you a little tab here. It'll most likely look like this. Uh, make sure you click it. If you're using it, you don't have to, but if you're using it, you should click it and you'll be able to see how much Delta V you have left and stuff like that. And how, and this is a good example as how we're going higher, we're getting more Delta V because the engines are getting more efficiency, as you can see. Delta V instead of going down, on the first stage is actually burning away, but on the second stage and the third stage is going up, which is a good thing. So anyway, as you're going up, make sure you start turning a little bit to the right. Make sure you always go to the right from, you know, this way, or towards the 90 instead of the 280, 220, I think, 270, that looks somewhere 270. Uh, because this way, you're taking the uh, spin of the, of the planet, curving, to help you out to get into orbit. Not that big of a deal, you can probably do it the other way, but it requires more fuel, let's just say that. You start turning, make sure you start turning, don't turn too much, around, uh, probably around now, you can do it a little bit earlier. But if you start turning a little too much, you're, you're going to lose control, trust me. So be careful. Um, again, more practice. Find the best way to do this. Uh, it's up to you. But uh, I usually do it a little bit later. Uh, usually because I've been playing with a lot of mods and, uh, and, you know, my my other series. And in that series, the game runs really badly because of the mods. Again, we ran out of fuel. Stage that. And now we just have a single core pushing us forward, okay? So a couple things to note here. Uh, Apple apps is height uh, Basically you want this to go over 70 once it goes over 70 you're good to go you're in space But you're still not in orbit. Okay, that's one thing that people make mistakes And again people also assume that but just by getting into space. Oh, I'm in orbit now, right? I'm in space. No, you're not you really are not you're gonna die. <laughs> so basically You don't want to go straight up. You want to basically give it an angle which I'm doing right now You want to gain horizontal velocity, which means going that way instead of just straight up right going horizontally and again Kerbal engineer gives you a good little thing to see up here a little hud vertical speed is not increasing that much however horizontal speed is and horizontal speed when you're going into orbit is very important i'll tell you about that in a little bit and that perhaps this height is almost a 50, uh, 60 we wanted to be up to at least 80 just to be safe you know you don't, don't want to get such a small margin of error when you're starting off because you'll probably mess it up and you'll hate yourself for it. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and wait for this thing to get up there. And once it does, we will I'll tell explain why you need more horizontal velocity, okay? Horizontal velocity is very important. So, 75, 76 kilometers. Again, 70 is a mark for you to get into space. So, yeah. 80 kilometers. I'm going to go ahead and ahead and go to 85 because 85 is, gives you a bigger margin so there we go okay so now we're 85 kilometers apoapsis and basically apoapsis is your highest point in your trajectory again not orbit trajectory because you're still not in orbit okay so in orbit what really is an orbit let me just explain what an orbit is an orbit is basically the ability of you going around the planet without hitting it i guess i guess right and okay, so if you burn up, basically you're going to go in a straight line all the way up and you're going to come back down, okay? So that's the problem that most people have. And I'll admit, I did that myself when I started the game. But I figured out most of it by myself, I'll be honest with you. It took me a little while, more than I would like to admit, but I figured all this maneuvering and stuff myself, okay? So anyway, you want the most efficient way to get more vertical speed is to get up to your apoapsis. 
Um, and basically, the higher you go, the better, I guess. So, again, you want to point pro grade. You can use your SAS. Your SAS will hold you there. But, again, you have these little controls. You have pro grade, retrograde, which is the opposite of pro grade. Pro grade is basically just the way you're going. Uh, pro grade is the opposite of the way you're going. So, you want to click pro grade and the, the pilot will basically... Jibadaya will basically point at his by himself. You want to engage your RCS, the RCS will help out in reorientating your ship. There you go, there you go. See, as you can see. And it's going to stop right here. So, again, you need at least 2,200 meters per second to be able to get into orbit. And that's the speed down here. Uh, you want this to be over 2,200. So, anyway, now that we're about to get to the apoapsis, our vertical speed is going down, down here. We're going to go ahead and engage the engine and see what we can get. So again, as our vertical speed is increasing, our periapsis is increasing. What is our periapsis? Our periapsis is the lowest point of the orbit or the trajectory which currently is inside the planet, right? It's negative 400,000 kilometers, right? And it's going up. As our vertical uh, horizontal speed is going up, our periapsis is going up. And that's going to basically pull the whole trajectory all the way around the planet, giving us an orbit, all right? So basically, you're going so fast that you're missing the ground that's basically what it is and i like using that analogy i did not make that analogy someone else did but basically that's the easiest way for me to explain that and also you you don't want to point your red to your retrograde when it goes under the horizon here and this is the horizon line the brown part from the blue line blue part okay so again it looks like we have an orbit but we're, we haven't okay so we haven't done it and uh once this goes, our periapsis goes over 70, like it did right there, we're in orbit, okay? Now we're so far up in a trajectory, going so fast and so far up that now we're not even touching the atmosphere anymore. Again, when your periapsis and your apoapsis is above 70 kilometers, you're in orbit. And congratulations from me and from everyone else that knows the game, because this is one of the hardest things to do in the game when you start off, okay? So, good job, good job. If you've done it, good job. Alright, so now for some maneuvering. And things you should know okay so you don't have to use RCS by by itself your rocket has or at least this one in the command pod it has reaction wheels not all command pods and probes have reaction wheels remember that um, some probes have don't have any reaction wheel or no SES actually no SES I think they all have reaction wheels now I think about it I've been playing too much modded Kerbal Space Program anyway but yeah be careful Remember to have electricity, especially if you're using a probe. If you lose electricity, your probe dies, basically. That's no real question about that. Uh, you don't have to worry about um, life support. Kerbals are immortal, apparently, unless you kill them yourself. But other than that, they're immortal. They're not going to die on you. You can basically send them to another star, and they won't die. Trust me. Like, like they are... I don't know what they live off, but basically in here, there must be a lot of food, maybe in those tanks over there, but... Very cool stuff, very cool stuff. Anyway, if you can see the planet, yep, see? Very cool stuff, huh? But anyway, okay, so basic maneuvers, okay? A lot of things that people misjudge about flying here in space is that they think that once you burn in one direction, that's the way you're going to go, right? So if I'm like, oh, I want to go to the moon, right? Let's see. I want to go to the moon. So the moon's over there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the RCS again a little bit to help me maneuver a little bit better. Okay, reaction wheels work, but they work really, really, really badly. Uh, they require electricity, and well, once you have a big payload, you can't really do much. So, here we go. So, we're pointing at the moon, right? More or less, right? So, most people say, I want to go to the moon. They go, okay, let's point on the moon and burn, right? Boom. Okay, so eventually, right? Eventually, we would, but the problem is we don't have enough fuel to actually get there. So, okay, we're burning towards the moon. Okay, so what is that doing? What has this done, okay? Right, we're going to the moon, right? Right, guys, we're going to the moon. No, we're not. Look at our periapsis. It's getting really low, isn't it? So you then you start asking yourself, well, what am I doing wrong, right? You're like, oh, I'm burning to the moon. Why, why, why am I not going to the moon, right? No, you're not. You need to do it more in a different way, right? I'm going to teach you that how to do that in the next couple episodes. But um, basically, that's not the way you're supposed to do it, okay? That's not how it works. And the only reason I did that is so we can get rid of this stage here. Alright, so now that we got rid of that stage, we're using our little, um, orbital stage here. And, uh, sometimes you will end up in trajectories like these, okay? And you're gonna probably start panicking a little bit. 
and uh, you're going to say, well, what do I do now, right? Don't worry about it. All you got to do is get to your Peria Apoapsis here and just burn prograde and you'll be fine. You're going to get a new Periapsis above the atmosphere and everything's going to be just fine. No need to worry. Everything's cool. All right, so here we go. Watch this. It's coming up. There you go. There's your Periapsis again. And we also we have enough Delta V. Always make sure you have enough Delta V. Don't make sure that you don't end up using too much of it when you're doing maneuvers and stuff. It's very, very, very important of you to do that. So one of the big deals about maneuvering in space when you're in orbit is basically if you want to go higher, the only way to do it is to do it on the other side of the orbit, okay? So if you want this part of the orbit to go higher, you got to go on this side and burn prograde to go higher over here. Most people wait till they're over here and start like, I want to go higher. They point literally up, which is radial, radial out. And they go, I want to go higher, so they burn. Yes, this will make you go higher for a little bit, but once you're, the gravity beats you again, you're going to go down. So the best, more efficient way to do this is just to wait till you're on the other side of the orbit and burn pro prograde to make go higher in that side, on the other side of the orbit, or retrograde to go lower on the other side of the orbit. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that here by going over here to where the sun is able... I'm able to see what the sun there, so here. So I want the, the orbit... To go higher over here right okay so all we have to do is point prograde and once we were there we burn and guess what the orbit is gonna get higher okay as you can see it's going up 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 up, up. higher and higher higher right all right so basically what if you wanted to go down which is the other for the direction retrograde you burn down you burn that way okay and the way for you to return home is basically burn retrograde for so long that your periapsis goes under 70k again this isn't the case for every planet um other planets have thicker atmospheres or thinner atmospheres like duna and uh, you need to make sure you look you click on the planet and click the uh, the information tab in the map view and again you go into the map view by pressing M and you click on the uh, parameters tab and it will tell you does this planet have an atmosphere yes it does atmosphere height 70 kilometers okay atmosphere pressure 1 ATM basically the same as Earth okay that's all you gotta look and when you're coming into a planet make sure you go above this if now you're gonna burn up in the atmosphere alright so again a little bit of an oral review if you want one side of the orbit to go higher, you need to burn on the other side. Prograde, if you want to go lower, you need to burn on the other side. Retrograde, okay? That's basically it for this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to go in for a final re-entry. And once that's done, I'll be ending the episode. So next episode, I'll probably either do... I'm probably going to do docking next episode, which is one of the more requested things in the, in the game. So, yeah. Uh, one more thing about about this is when you're trying to return don't do this okay don't like go okay so i want to go back home right i want to i want to land here or something don't do that that's dumb okay that's not that's not how it works you're gonna die there's there's just gonna be too much pressure uh, on the ship and too much heat and you're gonna kill your kerbal because there's just you're gonna slow down too fast basically what you want to do is get a periapsis of about 34 kilometers that's probably the best way to do that so again 2034 for periapsis for re-entry uh right there you got a little bit higher a little bit lower depending how high your apoapsis is or how high you're coming from if you're coming in from another planet you want to go at least at 40 and again that's going to bring other complications where you don't slow down enough and you don't actually land and you just fly off but that's going to be for the episode where, we, where I teach you how to go to another planet and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, heat shield, remember that you packed in your heat shield and stuff like that. Solar panels, we didn't need them in this episode, but they're here in case you need them. Uh, make sure you deploy them if you're using a probe, because your probe will die. Electricity is important in the game. So, yeah. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and go ahead and go into... Again, time warping. Time warping is also a very important part of the game. You don't want to wait years for you to transfer. So time warp, dot in the comma button. Just press dot in the comma button and you'll be fine. Dot to go faster. Comma button to go slower. 
Very cool stuff. All right. So, once you enter the atmosphere, you want to do this before, but I did this here. Detach your orbital stage, which means this piece. Boom. Okay. And also, make sure if you have a pilot, your pi the pilot and the SAS are your, are your friends when you're doing this. It's possible to use another Kerbal to another type of Kerbal to bring back the ship. But it's such a pain. Don't do it. Just put a pilot in your ship if you're learning. Uh, make sure to press retrograde. And basically, this is okay. I mean, we're, we're pretty much done with the mission. All you got to do is wait now. As long as you have power and your Kerbal is able to control the ship. And a blader too with the heat shield. So make sure you got all that stuff and you'll be fine. Again, uh, it gives you a little warning. Don't worry. Don't do it if you have a big ship though. That's basically what it is. Don't time warp um, within an atmosphere, which is called physics warp in an atmosphere. So don't do that uh, if you have a big ship. But here we only have three parts. So no big deal, right? So we're coming down. We're pointing retrograde. Everything's fine. We're going to see a lot of heating here. We're going over to a desert right now. So yeah, heating. A lot of heat. There's a moon over there. Uh, basically, as long as you don't see those warning gauges, you get a bunch of warning gauges when you're about to die. Trust me. We might get one here. But um, basically, you just want to keep that heat shield pointed. Don't go down the pointy part. You're not going to slow down enough and you will die. Trust me. So, it's just a lot of practice. Remember, practice is going to make this whole process a lot easier for you, more enjoyable. So, make sure to keep practicing. You're not going to get it right the first time. You're not going to go into orbit the first time. you got to be careful. Uh, it's okay to fail, remember. It's no big deal. Just keep trying, keep trying. You will get it. Um, in the next episode, where we do docking maneuvers. It's going to be even worse, trust me. So, yeah. Uh, docking maneuvers is the hardest part of the game. And, uh, yeah. Just, just, just remember to persevere and keep trying. Okay, so now our parachute warning has gone off. In case you didn't notice when this is red or, or yellow. Press space to engage it. And once it's engaged... Your surface velocity will go down to basically under 10 meters per second. As you can see, it is right there. Uh, you can drop the heat shield if you want to lose weight, I guess. I don't know why you would want to, but if you did, there you go. And uh, you will basically, depending on what kind of ship you have, you basically have to decide where you will land. That's going to take a little more practice where you're able to judge where your ship is going to land at. But, no big deal. Boom. So there we go. That's how you go into orbit, okay? Very simple, very, very, very detailed. I think I did a good job, but if you think I did a bad job, you know, go ahead and tell me. <laughs> Leave a comment and stuff like that. Uh, if you want me to teach you anything else specific about the game, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Suggest what I should tell you how to do or what to build or something like that or where to go. If you want me to teach you how to go to a specific place, I'll tell you how. Uh, and yeah. Remember, subscribe, like, and comment, and share the, the, the video so other people can actually learn how to play and get to know the chan channel and stuff like that. Help help the channel grow so I can keep making these. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're pretty good. I think anything else that I missed? No, I don't think I missed anything. So, yeah, guys, remember, uh, keep trying. Don't give up, and you'll make it. You'll be fine. You're going to enjoy the game. The game is very enjoyable. So, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next episode or part.